Good morning. It is still morning here by me. It's 11.53 a.m. at the time that this is with the numbers are rolling. It's your authorized version of the scriptures. The perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. Anything else is a Bible. And Rome gave you the Bible. Sure did. They sure did. God gave the scriptures. The authorized version. King James Version. Read along with me. Read with me. Word for word, verse by verse. Be a Berean. Keep an eye on me. Read with me in the scripture because I make mistakes that the mouth will go quicker than the brain sometimes, okay? Uh, you've watched any of these videos, uh, you, you'll, you, you'll see it. And praise the Lord for brethren who will, when uh, I make a go too quickly or something like that, you'll see a verse, uh, or I'll see a verse in the comments section of something that I covered, and when I see that, it's like, ah, I must, <laughs> I must have gone too fast or something, okay? Psalm 12. Apparently, apparently, some of you King James Bible believing Christians are offended that I'm what, what, causing division, right? Is that what you said? <laughs> so, some of you are offended. By some of the things about the reality of what the whole King James Bible believing movement has become. Okay? Some of you are offended. And as a dear beloved brother, friend, has said, take offense, take a gate. Okay? The facts are the facts are, dear friend. Okay? The King James Bible believing movement has become nothing more than a denomination of the very thing that you are all trying to separate yourselves from. And if you're offended at that, that brings a tear to my glass eye. So, let's read Psalm 12. Okay? See, distinction in these days is so important and God is a God of distinction okay God loves variety within the kindreds but there is only one God can price the spirit soul and body one faith one baptism identification one scripture one book, the authorized version. And flesh is what gets in the way every single time without exception. Hence, dear King James Bible believing Christian, the movement that you are so adamantly defending has become very that, that very thing. It is carnal. You prove yourself right about it being carnal every time you try to defend it. That it is, that it has become a carnal thing. And the question that comes up, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And flattery, flattery, flattery. I like the word pretentious. 
The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Hmm. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. I know you're offended by what I have said. But have you taken it to heart at least? Well, you have. Yeah, you were cut to the heart. <laughs> yeah, you were. Then you gnash on the teeth. Yeah, take, a, take a number, pal. <laughs> and no, praise the Lord, you are not my pal. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the pals like you, who needs enemies, right? <laughs> it's not funny, but it's laughable. You are because you say you are. Your movement is of God because you say it is. And charisma and uh, manipulation take the place of something that isn't there. Mm. For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy, now will I arise, set the Lord. I will set them in safety from him that puffeth at him. There are millions of Christians. Why aren't you a saint? And, 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 the, the, Again, <laughs> you, you, Rome, that whore, has given you a false notion of what scripturally a saint is. One of the best, um, uh, least, uh, not least of all, um, Bread of Life podcasts that uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley and myself were fortunate to do was one on what a saint actually is scripturally. Okay, that will be in the description box for you. Because when you guys hear what a saint, you know, you hear immediately you hear what a saint, saint, what do you think of? And it's and it's unintentional. It is. You, you say, you call yourself a saint in front of someone, that immediately they look at you like you think you're like some hoity-toity guy whose poop don't stink. Okay, they do. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. See, the whore tells you one thing. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through his perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word, tells you something different. Which one's the truth? It's in Christianity. But there ye hath God said stuff that comes from here. They look for the middle ground. Don't you? Well, guess what? There ain't no option C. You either you e you either is or you either is ain't. <laughs> However you want to say it. Okay. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. The scriptures went through a seven language purification process to arrive at the perfect standard KJV. English. Is English in and of itself a perfect language? <laughs> hey, you, you, uh, you uh, British, you Englishmen, <laughs> knock us Americans for our American English. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> Leave it to us Americans to take something that was decent at the beginning, twisted, and mess it up. Leave it to us Americans. Okay? And <laughs> that Muslim guy again, that one message, I'm really getting sick of that guy. Uh, I actually, in one of his videos, a little rabbit for you, he, he did in his community section, he did the thing about the rich young ruler and how the Lord, like, well, why callest thou me good? There's none good but God. And that individual, it's like, see, Jesus didn't say he was God. It's like, 
Dude, and I did in one of the videos, and I'm sure the um, the link hasn't been seen because there's something with YouTube and the blessed algorithm that they have that if you put a link, um, usually unless you're like a moderator or something, they won't put it through. But I, I gave a link describing that, and I saw the comment section. It's like, you people. But that, you know, there you go. And you got to remember, Islam is just simply a daughter of the whore. Anyway, the words of the Lord are pure words, the silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Keep what? The words. Hey, you know, read that Gideon's Bible of yours, which is a non-King James Version, which is a blending of Alexandrian and Antiochian texts. Blending it all together and yeah, they got all the verses in the non-King James Version. Yes, they do. But the errors and hypocrisies and the purposeful contradictions in there, uh, yeah, yeah. See, there is no contradiction in the Scripture when you rightly divide it. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to slow down, stop, and look at at the verse people okay and take the context context uh, we did a video on that uh, recently I don't offhand remember what video that was I'll find it but thou shalt keep them the words O Lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted to Jesuit order. You know, when the Lord got us here and kind of like, let's go. I, I want you to do something else, Brad. And he put me in this position. At the very first, oh, there were a lot of people around. Oh, there were. Some of them, some of them I miss. I, there, there are. There's um, Mr. Inerrantist. Um, uh, I don't know whatever happened to him. I, 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 some of his stuff he said, um, not teaching wise, but otherwise, uh, like him. I, 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 I miss speaking to a, to him. I, I really do. I really do. Uh, there's the one um, Canadian uh, individual. Not. Not the troublemaker guy who tried to separate brethren. Some of you know who I'm talking about. That devil. But there are like a couple, there's a Canadian individual who, um, you know, some that came with that were around at the beginning, I miss, I miss. Uh, were they brethren? <laughs> but see, that happens. That happens. People go away. Flesh gets in the way every time. But also, see, the longer you walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. And the more you seek to live your life according to this, the more especially Christians are going to put you away. I love you, brother, but... Your, your stands on the, the holiday thing is just too, you know, you're making too big of a deal of it. Mm. Okay. Yo, ho, ho, pal. Oh, no, excuse me. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Deck the halls there, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Go away. Go away. Just remember who you're worshiping on that day. And it ain't the one who you think you is. But see, that happens. That happens. And praise the Lord. Praise our Father, our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has put in our lives and the lives of each of us, brethren, brethren, who love one another in Christ, who pray for one another, when able are there for one another. 
and also admonish and exhort one another. And over the time that things like being in this position, there has been a weeding out process. And the farther you go in your walk with the Lord, and the more you seek to live your life accordingly to the Scripture, the less is going to be there. Because, again, this goes back to that thing about so many of these Christians in their elder years, in their walk with the Lord, supposedly, they seem to get more carnal and more compromised. And if they don't get compromised in worldly things, they get kind of like a personality cult going. Okay, again, Peter Ruckman, in his later years, is a perfect example of that. And <laughs> look at the bloodthirsty, money-hungry savages that the modern Ruckmanites are nowadays. I rest my case. Okay? But this thing about people leaving, like I said, I, I praise the Lord for the brethren, the brethren, and sisters, and sisters. <laughs> a few of them, few of them, but um, they are there. Praise the Lord for that gift of brethren. I really do. I really do. But see, truth divides. And when you seek to live your life according to truth, We're going to be in John chapter 6 to begin. But let's let's not remember uh, let's not forget 1 John 2:19. We're in the falling away. The falling away was happening even when Paul was in his ministry given him by the Lord. Okay? Yeah, it's the Lord's ministry through him. Okay? Verse 19 in 1 John 2. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Flesh gets in the way most of the time, but also truth divides. He has brought a sword. The authorized version, the King James Scriptures. Now, John chapter 6 we're going to be reading verses 47 to the close of the chapter, and we're going to have some light expository on this. Just, just light, just light, okay? Uh, if you have one of, one of these things, a uh, ribbon marker, you might want to use it today, okay? So, John 6, we're going to start by reading verses 47 on to verse 51, okay? John 6, 47 on to verse 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. The I am's in the book of John. If you want a good, you know, you really want to study the scriptures, take your little pen and within the book of John, every time you see an I am spoken of our Lord, circle it. Circle it. You'd be surprised and edified. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now he's talking symbolically about the death, burial, and resurrection, which was going to be coming here shortly. Okay? But see, 
What these devils do, these devils do, they take this literally. They take, take this literally. They tell you that a Jesuit priest, oh, we're going to touch on that. We're not going to read that yet. Uh, but they tell you that a Jesuit priest has the power because <laughs> you're going to see it. We're going to, I'm going to show you. They say that the priest is in the place of Christ. And they go, and these devils go through all kinds of scriptures trying to uh, twist that to justify it, that the priest is another Christ. Uh -huh. But see, the Jesuit order, which is Roman Catholicism, tell you that the Jesuit priest has the power to call down Jesus Christ into a perfectly round, uh, sun-shaped cookie. You Catholics know that. The Jesuit priest has the power to call Christ into a cookie. And that they also have the power to turn wine into blood. Now, if there was anything that could be construed as witchcraft, okay? But, verse 51, I am the living bread. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Now, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All the commandments which I command thee this day shalt thou observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know, that my, that, to know what was in thine heart, not that God did not know what was in their heart. He, he knew. So that they themselves would know. What would they know? Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. God knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. The end from the beginning. He doesn't live in our time. He lives outside of our time. He can see the beginning to the end. Okay? Okay, so he was there to prove these the children of Israel for what end? Verse 3, And humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And if you don't have a perfect standard, okay? Now go to Luke. Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 4. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and was led by the capitalist spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command that this stone be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Hey, you got a Bible? Is that in there? Hmm? Did they take it out? The oldest and best manuscripts, right, that are in the custody of Rome! Hmm. Yeah. 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 
And back to John chapter 6, verse 51 again. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hmm. Hmm. What is this talking about? Well, let's let's hear what these guys say, okay, about communion, about their little mass, about this. Now, I'm going to be reading to you word for word from the Roman Catholic Catechism. I'm going to be reading verses uh, 137 oh, on to, oh, let's see, 13, 1337 on to 1381. Okay? Quote, here's what Rome Satan's church tells you, okay, about what we're reading in John, okay? Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, is present in many ways to his church. In his word, in his church, church's prayer. Now, when these guys say that, they're talking about their buildings and themselves. Where two or three are gathered in my name, in the poor, the sick, and the in prison. And right there, two or three are gathered together in my name. Okay, that's taken from what? Before the death, burial, and resurrection. Today in this dispensation, and see these guys do not rightly divide the word of truth. Today in this dispensation, uh, you have the Lord living within you. Okay? All right? When the Lord said that about where two or three are gathered together in my name, guess what? <laughs> the Holy Ghost had not been given yet as a permanent resident within the believer. Okay? In the sacraments of which he is the author. No, 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 he ain't. In the sacrifice of the Mass and in the person of the minister, another Christ. But he is present most especially in the Pucharis species. The mode of Christ's presence under the Eucharist species is unique. It raises the Eucharist above all the sacraments, and then that you know raises it. You know that that little sun cookie. You see the raise it, the raising of the sun. It's Baal worship, people. It's satanic. Okay, this is Satanism. It raises the Eucharist, and yes, I'm going to refer, refer to it as the Eucharist. Offended? Good. It raises the Eucharist above all the sacraments as the perfection of the spiritual life and the end to which all the sacraments tend. Oh, a crafty way of saying the end justifies the means. In the most blessed sacrifice of the Eucharist, pay attention. The, the, quote, this is verbatim. Here, you want to see it? It's right there. It's right here. Can you see that? This is what the devil tells you about this, what we're reading in John. Okay? In the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore, the whole Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. End quote. There. Where the red is, look at that. You see that? Read that for yourself. Okay, can you see that? Huh? So, Rome, not, 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 God the Father, Rome, which is Satan's church, <coughs> tells you that the little cookie, that the Jesuit priest, as another Christ, 
has the power to call Christ down into a cookie. And y'all eat him. You can't make that up. It's, it's right there. It's right there. You Catholics receive Christ by eating him. Oh, and, and when we get to the other portion of John, we're, we're going to attack this even more so. So let's continue here. This presence is called real, by which is not intended to exclude the other types of presence as if they could not be real too. But because it is presence in the fullest sense, that is to say, it is substantial, it is a substantial presence by which Christ, God and man, makes himself wholly and entirely present. They are telling you that the cookie is God. That the cookie is God! I can't wait for the destruction of Roman Catholicism. Hey, one message, dude. How come you don't go after Rome, huh? Oh, because it says in your Quran that you'll find kinship with those Christians because they're priests and monks. Yeah. Anyway, there verse 1375. It is by the conversion of the bread and wine into Christ's body and blood that Christ becomes present in the sacrament. That's witchcraft. And we're going to see a little later a means of how Rome and the Christians, you know, Catholics, justify it, where it comes from. We'll look at that in a little bit. The church fathers <clears throat> strongly affirm the faith of the church in the efficacy of the word of Christ and of the action of the Holy Spirit to bring about this conversion. Thus, St. John Christosom, Christostom declares, <laughs> Christosom, Woo -hoo! It is not man that causes the things offered to become the body and blood of Christ, but he who was crucified for us, Christ himself. The priest in role of Christ. Right here. Right where my finger is. Right where my finger is. See that? See that? The priest in the role of Christ. Another Christ. You Catholics are taught that that Jesuit priest that's lifting the little bail cookie is Christ. That, that, that's what this says. That's what they teach you. Pronounces these words. But their power and grace are God's. pronounces these words. Abracadabra! Hocus pocus! This is God, the cookie, and the wine is his blood. But their power and grace are God's. This is my body, he says. This word transforms the things offered. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo, wow! Takes my breath away. St. Ambrose. Oh, what a devil. I've read some of that guy. Whoa. St. Ambrose says about this conversion. He convinced that this is not what nature has formed, but what the blessing has consecrated. Who's blessing it? The power of the blessing prevails over that of nature. Because by the blessing, by the blessing, nature itself is changed. So, think about this. Rome is telling you, Catholics, that in the satanic Eucharist, that the Jesuit priest is another Christ, and he also has the power of God to make 
things come alive. You Catholics eat this up like like I were your breakfast <laughs> with every pun intended. And you call us the heretics, the saints, the heretics. Mm. Could not Christ's word, which can which can make from nothing what did not exist, exchange change exi existing things into what they were not before? So when you got your Jesuit priest, who is another Christ, see how that works? It is no less a feat to give things their original nature than to change their nature. Oh, well, you got to change life, huh? And you, you sent me that. You, you want to defend these guys with your certain day in December. And you want to yoke up with that by justifying what Scripture does. And you call me, you call me the heretic. <laughs> Take this the wrong way. I hope that Sosa has dog dung on his slipper when you lick it. Anyway, excuse me. The Council of Trent summarizes the Catholic faith by declaring, because Christ our Redeemer said that it was truly his body that he was offering under the species of bread, it has always been the conviction of the Church of God and his Holy Council now declares again that by the consecration of the bread and wine there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ our Lord and the whole substance of the wine into the substance of his blood. Witchcraft! That's witchcraft! Scripture! In no way! In no way! Teaches that! Okay? If that were the case, okay, why didn't the apostles at the Passover supper, you know, the Last Supper, why didn't they, if he's like instituted it then, why didn't he say, hey, bite me? Why didn't he say that? This changed the Holy Catholic Church as fittingly, fittingly, and properly called transubstantiation. Trans. Changing one thing into another. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Oh, well, think about that with what we just read about the transgender nonsense stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, all right, you filthy pond scum devils. I can't wait to my father destroys you. The Pucharist presence of Christ begins at the moment of the consecration and endures as long as the Pucharistic species subsists. About 15 minutes, I've been told, that when they eat it, it's in your stomach for 15 minutes, and then it, then it becomes uh, something that gets cast out into the draught. Christ is present whole and entire in each of the species and whole and entire in each of their parts in such a way that the breaking of the bread does not divide Christ. This is lunacy. This is satanic heresy. Okay? This is witchcraft. All right? Worship of the Pucharist. Worship of the Pucharist. Kind of like the worship of the skin suits. A couple years ago, Lord had me to do a video 
um, about how the fake worship flesh and that scripture scripture tells you that the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into sinful because it was made of a woman okay all right but see Jesus Christ who never sinned and kept the commandments perfectly okay hence that sinful flesh was sanctified by him keeping the law perfectly that's why his body was a perfect sacrifice okay all right but see the devils and some of them King James Bible believing Christians, a little punk, okay? Um, we're like, oh, he said that the flesh of uh, Jesus Christ was sinful. Uh, no, I didn't, you little idiot. Scriptures does. Okay, and we, we've, that's, that's been debunked on many occasions. And if they, hey, you want to chew your cabbage again on this? Put the link for the videos where we debunk it again, okay? The thing you guys hope for is that no one wants to watch a two-hour video. <laughs> That's the only thing you got in your pocket. But when people do, they find out that, guess what? The scripture's right! You're not. Anyway. Worship of the Pucharist. In the liturgy of the Mass, we express our faith in the real presence of Christ under the species of bread and wine by, among other ways, among other ways, genuflexing or bowing deeply as a sign of adoration of the Lord. The Catholic Church has always offered and still offers to the sacrament of the Eucharist the cult of adoration. I, 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 right there. Okay, wait, can you, can you see that? Okay, it's right there. They actually use that word right in here. Look at it yourself. I remember that uh, that Walter Martin guy and uh, Alberto Rivera even called that guy out. The kingdom of the cults. He put moronism, which is just another daughter of the whore, was created by uh, Joseph Smith, uh, a Freemason. But um, <laughs> didn't put Rome at the number one cult in the world. Go figure. Go figure. Not only during Mass, but also outside of it. Reserving the consecrated host with the utmost care, exposing them to the solemn veneration of the faithful and carrying them in procession. All right. Well, we're almost done with this and then we'll get to scripture. The tabernacle was first intended for the reservation of the Eucharist in a worthy place so that it could be brought to the sick and those absent outside of Mass. As faith in the real presence of Christ in his Eucharist deepened, the church became conscious of the meaning of silent adoration of the Lord, Lord present under the Eucharistic species. It is for this reason that the tabernacle should be located in an especially worthy place in the church and should be constructed in such a way that it emphasizes and manifests the truth in the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. And you Christians in your little phallus house church buildings, can't you see how some of this is present, even in your non-denominational kind of stuff? <laughs> it is highly fitting that Christ should have wanted to remain present in his church in this unique way. He is! Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost! which dwelleth in you when you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him you call upon his name and he saves you. He dwells within you permanently. We, the saints, are the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Not this satanic witchcraft. Since Christ was about to take his departure from his own in his visible form, he wanted to give us his sacramental presence. Since he was about to offer himself on the cross to save us, he wanted us to have the memorial of the love which he loved us to the end, even to the giving of his life in his Eucharistic presence 
He remains mysteriously in our midst as the one who loved us and gave himself up for us. And he remains under signs that express and communicate this love. Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. The Jews require a sign. And these guys are the mothers of replacement theology. See, Catholicism, Satan's church, tells you that in order to receive Christ, you've got to eat him. Uh, there's no permanent indwelling of the, the Lord himself within a Catholic. Okay? Because this is not of the Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid! This is witchcraft, huh? Okay? The church and the world have a great need for a Pucharistic worship. And they'll get it. Kind of already in a sense do. Jesus awaits us in this sacrament of love. Let us not refuse the time to go to meet him in adoration, in contemplation, full of faith, and open to making amends for the serious offenses and crimes of the world. Let our adoration never cease. That in this sacrament are the true body of Christ and his true blood is something that cannot be apprehended by the senses, says St. Thomas, I'm assuming Aquinas. But only by faith, which relies on divine authority, by faith. So if you believe it, it becomes real. Oh, doesn't that kind of sound similar to believe and receive? <laughs> Just believe and receive, you sleazy believists. <laughs> you fake gracers. <laughs> yeah, but... Only by faith, which relies on divine authority. <laughs> your divine authority, right? Because you're a little God. Yeah. For this reason, in a commentary on Luke 22, 19, this is my body, which is given for you. St. Cyril says, Do not doubt whether this is true, but rather receive the words of the Savior in faith, for since he is the truth, he cannot lie. And see, they're telling you that when the Lord does, did, you know, the Last Supper, that he literally means to eat him. God had here in hiding. See, when they use actual scriptural terms in context of witchcraft, it offends, it's offensive to a saint. The Christians, on the other hand, whom I do adore, masked by these bare shadows, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at the service lo low lies, hear a heart lost, all lost in wonder at the God thou art. See, we're not going to, you, you got the point. That's it. That's it. That's it. So Rome tells you, and we're going to read this, that what Jesus is talking about here is to be taken literally and that a Jesuit priest as another Christ, you, you heard it, you heard it from the horse's rear end itself that the Jesuit priest as another Christ has the power to call God into a cookie and turn wine into blood and being God, being able to create something out of nothing. Okay? All right? Now, what is the communion truly about? Got a video on this too, but we're going to touch it here. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. First, not 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 and verse 28. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It was symbolic, not literal. And we're going to show you the scriptural problems with it being literal. Because if it were literal, which it is not, then... The Muslim guy could, and anybody, could go to certain places in Scripture, which we are going to look at and say, 
that that that's that's a contradiction. But see, Satan's church with philosophy and vain deceit, where her ways are movable that thou canst not know them, okay, justifies it. After the same manner also he took the cup when when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Okay? Now, Rome will acknowledge the remembrance, but see, again, they have that satanic witchcraft nonsense telling you that the priest, which is another Christ, has the powers of God. You heard it. You heard it. Okay? From the horse's rear end itself. Okay? For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. What does that mean? Dying daily. I die daily to myself, <laughs> to my sin. Okay? I still sin every day. Okay? But you're, we're to die daily to self and to the world. Okay? Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What is communion actually about? See, the Catholic tells you it's salvific. The Catholic tells you that's how you receive Christ. Communion, actual communion, is what? But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Second Corinthians 13. Second Corinthians 13. Again, brethren. Okay? Verses 3 on verse 5. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh the weakness of the flesh of mankind. Okay? Which is sinful. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. But we live with him by the power of God toward you. Yes, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Examine yourself. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? Jesus Christ in you, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Communion is reflection, moment of being with the Lord. It is not salvific. They tell you it is. Okay? Now go back to John chapter 6. Let's pick up at verses 52 and verse 58. <clears throat> now the Hebraic Jews had a lot more sense than a lot of you Christians do. The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Stop. Stop. You Catholics believe that their, your Jesuit priest can go abracadabra, hocus pocus, woody woody, and put God in a cookie and turn wine into blood. Okay? But then again, you Catholics are replacement theology. Okay? The Hebraic Jews is like, whoa, wait a minute, man. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let's read what the Lord says. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now see, he's not talking literally. He's not. He's not. Figuratively. Symbolically. Okay? That's what he's talking about. He's not talking literally. Because if he were, we're going to see this, you would have contradiction within Scripture. Okay? Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, 
and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Symbolically. And also remember, he is in that also referencing unto the coming dispensation, which is today, when you go his way, uh, his way, the way of the cross, and he saves you, he dwells within you permanently. Something that you Catholics and most of you Christians don't have. Okay? This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fa fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. And right there too, the manna was temporary. Okay? The manna was a temporary thing. They ate the manna and they were filled and they got it the next day because of the gift of God. And if someone tried on, on the Shabbat, the Sabbath, tried to keep uh, or before the Sabbath, uh, because they did it uh, like on the day before the Sabbath, you know, Friday, uh, the Lord would give uh, another portion so they wouldn't have to go out and gather it. But if someone tried to do that uh, other days during the week, it would rot and stink because you were on, they were meant to be dependent on the Lord. Okay? But see, in that dispensation under the law, it was temporary. I had to keep filling it. And see, you go to the Lord his way and he saves you and seals you. He satisfies. He's in you permanently. You Catholics, Christ is in you because you eat him. And then later on during the day, you cast him out in the draught. You, you guys are so brainwashed. And so fanatical. And so under the delusion of Satan. Okay? Now, what's the problem here? If this were literal, then we would have a big problem. Why is that? Go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Okay? Genesis chapter 9. Genesis means the beginning, by the way. Genesis chapter 9, verses 4 on to verse 6. This is under the dispensation called the dispensation of the patriarchs. Patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? It is during this dispensation where our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, established the Hebraic line taken from Shem, not Ham, not Japheth. Okay? And remember, Rome is Japheth. Babylon is Hamitic. And it's interesting that Japheth and Ham comprise Catholicism. Because it's the Babylonian religion perfected by the Japhethian Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. 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 But anyway, Genesis chapter 9, verses 4 and verse 6. Quote, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Not three blah, blah, persons that make one God. Okay, that's, again, that's satanic. That's Babylonian. Okay? All right? This is in the dispensation of the patriarchs before the law. Make a mental note there. Okay? Leviticus chapter 17. Now, the Jehovah's, the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, when it, most know about Leviticus 19.26. Okay? Uh, it was that that the Jehovah's twisted and made it so that, uh, that their teaching was it was a sin for someone to get a blood transfusion. And because of that, a lot of people died. Okay? All right? 
But in Leviticus chapter 17, 12 on to 14, under the law, so you got to write me to find the word of truth, friend. Okay? This is a different dispensation. Men are made right or saved indifferently upon the dispensation. The way we are saved and made right with God today is not the way they were saved and made right with God under the law. Okay? You have to understand that. But Leviticus 17, verses 12 on to verse 14. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger, someone that is not a Hebraic Jew, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. Verse 14. For now someone will, if you stop, it's like, well, it's not talking about the blood of Christ. Uh, but, 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 wait, wait, wait. For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat no blood, no, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, of no manner of flesh. That encompasses everything. For the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. Okay? And let's let's hit while we're here, let's hit Leviticus 19:26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment or observe times. We're, we're going to get to that one in a minute, okay? All right? And he has given what? The blood upon the what? The altar to make atonement, right? Right? Okay, where, uh, where was that? That was uh, 18, right? 18, uh, I forget where that is. But uh, one second. Sorry about that. Leviticus 17.11. We were looking right at it. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. And then we have already read that you're not supposed to eat it. Okay? So we see this prohibition against eating Drinking blood under the dispensation of the patriarchs and under the dispensation of the law. What about today? You read Hebrews 9. The death of the testator brought in the New Testament this dispensation that we are in today. So, go to Acts 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay? So, wait, with the death, burial, and resurrection, that means because he did the, he, the Christ in this instance of the Eucharist, that means we can eat flesh and drink blood, right? Uh, then you have a problem. Acts 15, 13 on the 20. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Samaian hath declared unto, Samaian hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. This is Amos 9 that he's quoting. Which has fallen down and I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up, ruins. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called sat the Lord. Who doeth all these things? Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is, pay attention, that we trouble not them which from the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, 
and from blood. This came from Acts 15, the Jerusalem Conference. Okay? So, if it, it, and it isn't, if it is as these devils say, then you look at that, it's like, well, wait a minute. Your Jesuit priest does abracadabra hocus pocus, turns a cookie into flesh and the wine into blood, but it says right there, it says right there, and from blood. And then these guys, philosophy and vain deceit, after the rudiments of the oil, and not after Christ. Got a problem there, Jack. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. And verses 28 and 29. 28 and 29. Again. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. In Acts 15. 28 and 29. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood. And from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So, during the dispensation of the patriarchs, under the law, today, not supposed to eat or drink blood. And see, you, 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 they, they telling you otherwise, what's the authority? Well, see, Rome, they, you know, uh, the Council of Trent, which I have a copy of over there, they declared that tradition, man, tradition, tradition, that's more important than scripture. Yeah, tradition, yeah, we've always done it this way, so we're going to continue to do it. Tradition, yeah, even though scripture says it's wrong, because of your tradition, you're going to keep doing it. All things are lawful for you. You call me the heretic, huh? You want, to rope, you want to yoke yourself up with Rome. And then you go and try to attack them. Well, when you defend one of their biggest days. And you call me the heretic. You call me the heretic. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> take, take a number, Jack. <laughs> take a number. And also, well, you know, let's, let's Acts 21. Acts 21. I want to touch, and then I'm going to touch on something that I have encountered. You're going to blow your mind. Acts 21, just one verse, 25. Quote, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. I have encountered someone when it comes to like eating the flesh of Jesus, trying to justify the cookie from a Catholic apologist or whatever. It's like, well, the children of Israel ate the flesh of the people. Now, you saints, when you hear that, you're like, what? Well, yeah. See, this is what happens when someone is totally ignorant of Scripture, depends on Satan for them to guide them. They will believe anything. See, when you get the Scripture away from people and you give them this tripe, Okay, they'll believe that God consists of three persons. They'll believe that Jesus Christ is in a Jesuit priest who has the power to call God into a cookie and turn this into flesh and wine into blood. Okay? You take the scriptures away. The scriptures are here. But you come around with, yea, hath God said, people will believe anything. Scripture tells us there's two genders. Take it away from the people. I mean, the scriptures are there, but affect their minds against the scriptures, I should be saying. Rather, thank you. They'll believe anything. This is why these devils are getting away with the stupidity that they're getting away with. This is why you got people like idiots like Crazy Ain't 
being able to lie to people that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Because people don't search the scriptures. They're taught by Satan to look at their leaders as gods. But I've run into that. Well, the children of Israel, they, they ate flesh. They ate man's flesh. So that justifies the Pucharist, huh? Brethren, again, when you take, when you affect people's minds against what God has said and replaced it with the words of Satan and his Bibles, because Rome gave you the Bible, they'll believe anything. They'll believe anything. And they'll go to anything to justify it. Yeah. Well, well the children of Israel, they ate. The, 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 the guy said, they ate human flesh. Oh, you're a human, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Put that in the description. Mark. That, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, you're a human. Huh? <laughs> go, they ate human flesh. Again. Hugh Man video will be in the description box. I'm just using that because that's what the dude said. Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. Yes, the children of Israel done went cannibal. <laughs> but why? Brethren, that, again, the level of depravity in order to justify sin when you affect people's minds against what God has said and replace it with what Satan says in the Bible and in the things written by Satan and man, okay? They'll believe anything. Leviticus 26, 14 on to verse 16. But if ye will not hearken unto me, I will not do all these commandments. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection under the law. Eternal security was not there. The blood, the, the blood of Jesus Christ was yet to be shed. Eternal security was not there. The Lord did not dwell in anyone permanently. Totally different dispensation. Okay? But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agu, or agi. There's no word pronunciation thing there, brother. That shall consume the eyes, and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And you think about about how the scriptures say, he who gives on to the rich will surely come to naught, and your treasures will be in the house of... Uh, that's Proverbs 5 something, about give your substance on to the wicked or something like that. Someone will correct me on that, hopefully. <laughs> okay? All right? Now, while in Leviticus 26, let's look at verses 26 on to 30 now. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. See, this was a judgment against Israel because they turned from the Lord and worshipped Baal and Satan. They worshipped Satan. Okay? They loved themselves. 
and also they projected into their children made them into their own little idols which you see going on today you read about that in scripture yes in the siege the Israelites the Israelites were so starving and so depraved that they actually you read about that with what was it Ahaz where the the two prostitutes not that two prostitutes uh, the two whores uh, boiled the one kid in the water and ate him okay all right it, yeah it was a sign of judgment against Israel and think of the selfishness where you're willing to eat another person's spirit soul and body to preserve oneself contrary to scripture so it was a sign of judgment the Catholic haven't you now figured it out you're eating a cookie that a Jesuit priest is telling you is the body of Christ uh, so you're being a cannibal um, it's a sign of God's judgment against you have you figured that out yet This idea, this the, the, the whole thing that we looked at here in the, in that thing, okay? Oh, one of them is like you spit on a book. I'd spit on Sosa's feet if I could. Let him kill me. <laughs> Let him kill me. Send me home. They wouldn't kill me right away. They'd probably want to torture me, but go ahead. Okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, the, the whole thing of transubstantiation, the Jesuit priest taking the cookie, the rising of the sun, okay? That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Where did this idea, where, 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 where's something where this, and to the Catholic, where they would be able to go to say something about this? Now, this part, you saints, unless you've got, those of you that have the 1611, you can go there. But um, the book of Tobit, <laughs> Tobit. Tobit is a humorous book. Okay? Tobit is funny. The, the, the story of Tobit, which is not scripture, the majority of Catholic doctrine is found within the apocryphal books. That's why the Catholics want it in their Bibles. It is in the authorized version. It was in the authorized version sandwiched between the Old and New Testament. Okay? It was left in there for whatever value. Okay? The only thing credible to the Apocrypha, the only thing, is that yes, the Maccabean Revolt actually did happen. And I believe it was Acts chapter 5 where, uh, what's his name? You know, where if this council be of men, it'll come to naught where he says that. I think that's Acts chapter 5, where he makes mention of Judas before the taxing. That's a scriptural reference onto the historical Maccabean, uh, Maccabean revolt. Revolt, okay? The Maccabees, Maccabean revolt, okay? That actually happened, and yes, that is the only reference in scripture to it, okay? That is the only thing that the Apocrypha, the only actual tie-in. But there again, the Book of Maccabees, and I've read the Apocrypha, are full of contradictions. It contradicts itself. And here's the thing. The Apocryphal books contradict the established canon of the Scripture, established by the Lord Himself. Okay, you read about that in Luke. Okay, Luke uh, 21, I believe. Uh, the Moses and the Prophets... And something else, okay? He gave you the canon and the scripture, okay? At that time, all right? Okay? What's found in the Apocrypha contradicts the established canon of scripture. Is it any wonder that the majority like the prayers for the dead? Maccabees. Maccabees, okay? And also the book of Sirach, the wisdom of Jesus, they also call it. <laughs> okay? Tobit! Tobit's funny. Tobit's funny. This, this guy, Tobit, gets birth poop in his eyes and goes blind. But here's something 
in the book of Tobit that if you've never heard of this, this, this will shock you. First of all, scripture, ah, uh, uh, somebody, uh, there's Gabriel and there's Michael, okay, right? Of the angels, there's Gabriel and Michael, I believe. Uh, someone in the comment section can correct me. The Apocrypha gives you another one, Raphael. Tobit 5, now I'm assuming most of you don't have the Apocrypha, uh, so, so bear with me. Tobit 5, verse 4. Therefore, we, therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael. That was an angel. Okay? So, Raphael, an angel. An angel of the Lord, which Tobit talks about. Now, in Tobit 6, pay attention. Where, where would Catholicism get this idea of utilizing a clearly satanic practice such as someone saying they're God and turning a, a dead substance bread into something living like God does. Where would they get even the notion of that? Check this out. Verses 1 on to verse 8 in Tobit. And as they went on their journey, they came in the evening to the river Tigris, and they lodged there. And when the young man went down to wash himself, a fish leaped out of the river and would have devoured him. Then the angel said unto him, This is Raphael, take the fish. And the young man laid hold of the fish and drew it to, drew it to land. To whom the angel said, Pay attention to this. To whom the angel said, Open the fish, and take the heart and the liver and the gall, and put them up safely. So the young man did as the angel commanded him. And when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. Then they both went on their way, till they drew near to Ekbatani. I don't know. Then the young man said to... The angel, Brother Azarias, that was what his name, I think he was saying that he was, um, he was calling himself that, but it was actually Raphael, okay? And hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? This is not inspired scripture, so whatever. Check this out. To what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? See, this Raphael was pretending to be a man, and this guy, this wasn't Tobit himself, but his kid. So this uh, uh, Raphael disguised himself as this Azarias, okay? All right? And if I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong about that, okay? So what? Here's the point. This guy here is an angel of the Lord. So Tobit, the book of Tobit says to you, he said for this dude to take what? The, uh, where is that? The heart, liver, and the gall from the fish. It's good eating. You bread it, you bread it in beer batter. Never mind. And he said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, pay attention to this. If a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman, and the party shall be no more vexed it. As for the gall, it is good to anoint a man that hath whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. Did you catch that? Verse 7. And he said, this is an angel of the Lord telling this dude to do this. An angel of the Lord. God said that you will not do uh, witchcraft, uh, enchanter, witch, necromancy. It's sin, evil. He hates it. That's why he expelled the other nations and gave those nations unto the children of Israel. Because they did witchcraft. But, see, the Catholic who tells you that the 
apocryphal's inspired scripture, you have an angel of the Lord telling some dude to use witchcraft. And he said unto him, touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman, and the party shall be no more vexed. Witchcraft. And some of you cute, get cute. Well, uh, Nebuchadnezzar looked in the liver. He was, yeah, he was practicing witchcraft. Now think about this, brethren, saints, okay? The Catholic believes, is told, you know, Satan's church, that the Apocrypha's inspired scripture. And you have, in the book of Tobit, here, here, I'll, I'll show it, here, look for yourself, look for yourself, right where my finger is, okay, right where my finger is, right where my, my bird finger is, <laughs> okay, there it is, there it is, read it yourself. You have an angel of the Lord telling people to use witchcraft to ward off devils. So, now, draw that out. You have a Jesuit priest who, who they tell you is another Christ. Okay? Standing in the place of Christ. Another Christ. Calling God from heaven into a cookie and abracadabra, hocus pocus, turns wine into blood. Witchcraft. Where would Rome get such an idea? Yeah. Yeah. In the Apocrypha and Tobit, you have a supposed angel of the Lord promoting witchcraft. What else is there to say? John chapter 6 again, verses 59 on a verse 65. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said in his said, "This is a hard saying. Who can bear, who can hear it?" See, the Hebraic Jews, when they heard that, they thought that the Lord was speaking literal, and they're like, "We can't follow that." And the Lord wasn't speaking literal. But see, you Catholics think are taught that it's being literal. That He's saying you got to literally eat my flesh. That's how they get away with teaching you witchcraft. And calling that Christianity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo ho ho, buddy. Yeah. Deck the halls, pal. Yeah. 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 Anyway. But they went away. Because, see, he wasn't speaking literal, he was speaking figuratively, symbolically. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Many, verse 60, many therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, doth this offend you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was, send, ascend up, excuse me, where he was before. Look at verse 63. Don't you look at me right now. You look at that verse 63. Now, okay, look what, look what he says. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. One of two things. You either got a glaring contradiction there, which that twit uh, Muslim guy 
could point to that like, look at this. And knowing that guy, he probably would. Look at this. He says to eat my flesh, and here he says it doesn't profit you. Or it's not, he's not meaning it to be literal. Like a brother says, it's like, yeah, every single thing that, you know, it contacts people. Context defines it. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, has just either proved himself a hypocrite and contradicting himself in the very passage we're looking at, or verses what we're reading about his flesh and blood are not meant to be taken literally. And you Catholics take it to be literal when the Hebraic Jews at that time was like, dude, this is crazy. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words. The words. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And then you go to the Apocrypha, you read the book of Tobit, and then you read about how the angel of the Lord is telling people to use witchcraft. It's not funny. What, 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 what's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? Verse 64 now in John chapter 6. But there are some of you that believe not. And the, the Catholics will come to that and say, you got to believe it. So again, believe it and achieve it. Because you believe it, it makes it real. Oh, just believe and receive. That's how the Catholic twists this. <laughs> it's like they, like the sleazy believers does. They skip over a verse to justify their heresy. Just like the sleazy believers. They totally omit Romans 1, 2, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 18. And then go to the one part, oh, oh, jumping over the required brokenness and contrition. Fear of the Lord. Okay? But there are some of you that believe not. Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, No man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And of course, very simply, John 8 41 on 47. Ye do the deeds of your father, Satan. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. She said unto them, If God were your father, he would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It cometh from himself. He is his own God. For he is a liar and the father of it. What are we reading to? Uh, I lost my place. 47. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. People, the more you preach truth and live truth, the fake, the, uh, the less you're going to have, okay? You're going to find out who your brethren are the longer you go. 
The more you adhere your life to Scripture, the fake and the dross are going to be taken away. Okay? All right? Now, let's read verses 66 on to 71 in John chapter 6. Okay? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Doth this offend you? You you're not you you're not standing up for certain you know things of King James Bible even Christianity can't can't follow you anymore brother okay bye don't don't let the door hit you in the rear end on the way out bye bye au revoir <laughs> roll up another one <laughs> go ahead yeah and uh, jingle bells all the way huh <laughs> yeah go ahead bye bye. I see. I, I, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna stay right here. Well, that's where I do. Yeah. Really. Really. Okay. Well, if if we really are brethren, if you are my brother, right? And I'll see you up there, and then and see, like I told you before, flesh gets in the way. Flesh gets in the way. Okay. But when it comes down to scripture. Scripture is the dividing line. And you want to try to use uh, Scripture to justify your sin? Well, guess what? Guess what? And, and, I, and I mean this with all kinds of Christian charity. You can go to hell then. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I stand on the Scriptures. Thank you very little. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Everybody loved Jesus. No, not everybody did. See, the Jesus of Scripture is very confrontational. And many people followed him at the first, but the more truth he revealed, the less the dross, the fake, went away, falling away. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Sarcasm. A little sarcasm there. Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, <laughs> to whom shall we go? What else is there? Oh, there went with Jesus. There's Rome. There, there's, uh, there's oh, the Jehos, the morons. There's Islam. There's the Pentecatholics. Uh, there's the Baptists, the German Catholics. Okay. <laughs> there's all kinds of Jesuses. And Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Who else is there? Who else is there? But the actual Jesus of the scriptures. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ. Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of them. They went out from us, but they were not all of us. Judas Iscariot was chosen. Yes, he was. And I personally believe the Lord did that to show us that Judas was there up until the, the supper time. And then after the Lord gave him the sop, Satan entered into Judas and went away. See, the ultimate act of truth, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross was on the horizon. And he gave him the sop, and then Judas went out, and he, the Lord said, That thou doest do quickly. So that devil, Judas Iscariot, was up with the Lord until very much, almost till the very end. Almost. I personally believe that the Lord allowed that to show us that there are some people out there who will go through some of the fire as your brother, as your sister, 
But when you stand here, and only here, th th this is a sword. See, in Hebrew, this isn't part of the notes, but in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 4, okay, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Again, God is the one who makes the distinction. How? Right here, Jack. Right here. Right here. The longer you walk, brother, sister, with the Lord, the more you seek to live your life according to his word, the less popular you're going to be. And then you know who your brethren really are. Like I said at the beginning of this video, we know, I know who my brethren are now. Absolutely I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm very hesitant. And I've learned quite a few lessons over the years. Uh, that's why I'm very hesitant to include newer people. But there have been some over the years that have come along that it's like, you, oh, you are my brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know? Pray. The longer you walk, you're going to know who is on the Lord's side or all things are lawful for me. We've always done it. We, we've done it, done it since I was a kid. So we're, we're always going to do it. You'll know. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 31 on the 32. Matthew 26, 31 on the 32. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And of course, Peter gave his proud boasting, I'll never will. And then, of course, what happens? He denies him three times, and on the third time, the Lord looked at Peter. To this day, 16 years in the faith, that still brings a tear to my eyes. Because how many times have you saints been warned of something, knew what was going on, then it happens, and then you could just, you just like the Lord's like, I told you so. And of course, John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verses 32 on the 33, John 16, 32 on the 33, these were his disciples, his apostles, okay? John 16, 32 on the 33, behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the Word made flesh. Okay, that's how that works. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And of course, the Lord is making reference onto Zechariah chapter 13. Just one verse. Verse 7. Zechariah, not Judith. <laughs> Zechariah 13, verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little one. Everybody loves Jesus. But the more truth that Jesus spake, the less his little circle got. And when it came, pushed to shove, garden there of Gethsemane, 
Like, if you're after me, then let these go their way. And they all flee, bolt. Peter, of course, he took out the sword and cut off Malchus's ear, but that was just a vain shoot because he denied him. You know, he was willing to go the physical thing, but in the face of true adversity, you're one of them. I don't know. Second Timothy now, chapter four. Paul, Paul the apostle. The beloved Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of the living God, which uh, the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 4. You know, towards the end, you know, how popular was Paul? <laughs> Verses 10 on verse 18. Second Timothy 4. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, Christian, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. So he had a whole team with him, right? You could argue. But only Luke was with him. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I let, sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. And the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the copper smith, smith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also? For he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. At the judgment seat, I ain't going to be holding my wife's hand and she ain't going to be holding mine. In the most traumatic moments of the Lord Jesus Christ's life, it's just him. It's just him. God the Father, soul of the Godhead. Okay? Jesus is the Father, but it was just him alone. But yet he was never alone because the Father was with him. We, we read that. And Jesus is the Father. See, the Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. See how that works? At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. And of course, <laughs> the uh, more I love you, the less I am loved. The more truth you shew, you're going to see who your brethren are. And some of you might say, well, Brad, you know, you are kind of a you know, jerk sometimes. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that, sure. Sure, I'll give you that. Okay. But what matters more? Truth or the one who's speaking it? Meaning the messenger. I'm nothing. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is everything. His word. He has exalted his word above his name. Notwithstanding one's gone huh? the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen and you know go to Galatians Galatians chapter 1 Galatians chapter 1. Verses, where is that? 10 on the 12. For do I now persuade men or God? Trying to justify sin? Persuading men. 
Or do I seek to please men? Nope. Somebody left in comment. It's like, you're not looking to make many friends, Brad. It's like, you're right, buddy. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I know who my brethren are. For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Oh, and you see a lot of men pleasing in Christianity. And sadly, you see a lot of men pleasing within King James Bible believing Christianity. Prove me wrong. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, of, of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The more I love you, the less I be loved. And see, brethren, when everyone abandons you, okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 6, the video debunking Calvinism will be in the description box. This has nothing to do with Calvinism. Calvinism is satanic. Okay? Ephesians 1, verses 1 out of verse 6. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. This means simply you go the way of the cross and he saves you. Your destination is predestined. You're going to go to heaven and be with the Lord. That's what that means. That does not mean that God elects certain people to go to heaven and certain people to go to hell. That is coercion, that is cruelty, and that is not the God of Scripture. Okay? To the praise of His glory, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. We Gentiles, were grafted into the beloved, the tree of the Jew, the Hebraic Jew. Hence, through adoption, through the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross, making of twain one new man, a saint in Christ Jesus, us Gentiles grafted in to the tree of the Jew. We're accepted in the beloved. And while we're here, 13 and 14, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, af in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capital S spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You're saved, you're a saint. You're accepted in the Beloved. You're accepted in the Beloved. 2 Timothy 2, 11 on a verse 13. This is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to that. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will also, he also will deny us. It's not talking about salvation. It's talking about other things. Because if that were talking about salvation, the scriptures... We just read in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 would be a contradiction. That's not the case. We deny him by walking contrary to what he wants us to do. He can deny his blessing, whatever, whatever, and whatever. But our salvation is in him. He is our salvation. It's not ours to lose. Get it? We can lose all kinds of things. But we can't lose what isn't ours because it's his salvation. It's him. And we're once saved, always saved. If you go the way he prescribed. Too many like to boot the door and climb up another way. Hence, you're a thief and a robber. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. 
We are of his bones and of his flesh. Okay, we aren't little Christs, but we belong to him. We are the purchased possession. Okay, we are of his house. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. The point of this video is to comfort you, brethren, when people start going away from you because you're standing for scripture. Take offense, take a gate. I know who my brethren are. Okay? You, saint, know who your brethren are. And if you don't, the weeding out process is happening. Isaiah 49, 15 on to 17. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yet, yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Again, another one of my pet peeves is you see people like, well, Jesus was crucified through the wrists. No, he wasn't. Through the hands. Wrist, hand. Wrist, hand. There's a difference. Okay? Remember, they put nails through his feet holding the brunt so he could be. The argument is if he was like the bulk of the weight was in his hands, they... They bore uh, nails through his feet to hold him up so he could go through the hands. Okay? That, that's something that really ticks me off sometimes. Pardon my language there. But that does. It's like, uh, that, oh, he was... No, he wasn't. Scripture clearly says it was through the hands. Pet peeve. Continuing. Verse 17. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth shall go forth of thee. Tie in there. Yeah. Thou, thou shalt go forth of thee. First John 2, 19. They went out from us, but they were not, not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay? Pro, uh, Psalm 27, one verse. Psalm 27, just one verse. Verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take, take me up. Paul had Luke. Every man abandoned him, but the Lord stood by him. In the most precious hour of the Lord Jesus Christ, the apostles fell asleep. Like I said, I, I know who my brethren are. I know who my Luke is. I know who my Luke is. Okay? So other than my wife, of course. That I don't need to say that for those of you, but... I know who, you know, Paul's like, only Luke is with me. I know who my Luke is. I actually believe I have several. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because go to Proverbs 18, one verse. Proverbs 18, just one verse, 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know, the brethren of Jesus Christ didn't believe in him. And yes, Catholic, Jesus Christ had brothers. Okay? He did. All right? Mary was not a virgin. She had many children. If she was a perpetual virgin, virgin like you all say, like Satan wants you to believe, then she would have been uh, in sin denying her husband. Okay? But even his brethren didn't believe in him. Okay? There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. My actual bro blood brother and I are, he, he's lost and going to hell. Okay? We can't talk. Okay? Because number one, he's got a devilish temper. And number two, I don't fret man. And if it ever came down to it, I'm going to stand my ground. He'd probably whoop the snot out of me. 
That's my, that's my blood brother. But there's a friend. Just to get closer, my brother. And also, John, this, I like this. John 17, 17. Uh, not John. We're, we're going to look at that. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. See, you get friends... Who no matter what you're doing. Are going to pat you on the head. Or pat you on the back. When they know you're doing something that's evil. They won't say. That, don't worry about it. Though. I'm doing okay. You know? Where a brother. Who loves you. Is like dude. I love you. I, I, I'm not going to abandon you. But I, dude. You, you know, I'll be, you know, I'll go away if if it's like you know, like in First uh, Corinthians, like like that. But for example, I know brethren who have bad habits. Okay, <laughs> you know, meaning uh, sometimes I I struggle with gluttony. Okay, bad food. Okay, see a brother, a brother. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A brother will tell you the truth out of love. A brother will be like, hey, Brad, you know what you said? Yeah, I love you, man, but you said something wrong the other day. What? Okay, show me. Just like, see that? Like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Why don't you just stop my toe again? Please, thank you. You know? See, a brother, a sister, who actually is, will tell you truth. Whereas a friend, the inference is that a friend will compromise. Even though they know it's like, maybe I should say something, but I just don't want to, so I'll just say, go ahead, jump off the cliff, and then after you fall off the cliff, it's like, you're like, well, why didn't you tell me? It's like, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> hurt my feelings, please. And when it comes to regards of truth, to hell with my feelings. Give me truth. Give me truth. My brethren who love me, to hell with my feelings. Brad, I'm going to tell you truth. To my brethren. To hell with your feelings. I love you. I'm going to tell you the truth. John 17, 17. The, the tie in there with Proverbs 17, 17. I just, I just, I just, I just couldn't really resist. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word. John 15, 13 on to verse 16. John 15, 13 on to verse 16. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's charity. Charity, you little twit. Charity and liberty are two different things. Yes, there are aspects of one within the other. You can have charity without liberty. You can have liberty without charity. They are not the same. And you teaching it that it was is what got your thing taken down, you little devil. Okay? Good. Anyway. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. This is not Calvinism again. That he's going to the uh, he's going to the cross. Okay, it's coming. All right. For the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Okay. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. And what are we reading to uh, here at verse 16? 
Oh, right there. Right there. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. And see, ultimately, again, you go the way of the cross, but are you truly broken? Do you have true contrition? Uh, is the hell been scared out of you? The Lord is the one who does the saving. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Let's end it here. Matthew 28. Oh, hold on. I'm getting there. <laughs> Matthew 28. Verses 19 unto 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of, singular, one name, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And uh, what was that? Uh, John, I messed up there. John, uh, there's one more reference. John. Was it 13? One, one moment, brethren. Sorry about that. I wrote down something wrong in my notes. John 14. Then we will be done. Verses 16 on to verse 18. Now we just read in Matthew. Okay, let's go back there. We just read in Matthew. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. A singular name. Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. John 14, 16 on to verse 18. I will pray the Father, and he shall send, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Once saved, always saved, making reference unto this coming dispensation, the one we're in. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And the Lord is that spirit. That spirit of promise. You know, the farther we go, brethren, and the closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, the falling away has been going on for centuries. Yes, it has. But it's getting worse. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And people are seeking to justify themselves and there are some out there that are real good at using scripture to justify sin. Don't be alarmed when people separate you and call your name, whatever. Okay? And they praise the false prophets because the false prophets tickle their ears. They, they tell them things they want to hear. See, brethren, this is contrary to man. This is contrary to your flesh. But life is given us through the scripture. So, you know, brethren, I know who my brethren are. And you saints know who is your brethren as well. Don't be alarmed when people start separating themselves from you and cast your name out. Because, as we have seen, such is the plight of the saint. And I also want to say, take offense in a gate. And don't let the door hit you in the buttocks on the way out. I stand upon the scripture. So, thank you, brethren. 
Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. Keep our dear brother Jeff Jones in your prayers. He really needs the prayers of the body of Christ. Do keep him in your prayers. So, thank you, brethren. I'm going to get this uploaded, and Lord willing, we will see you in the next video.